Hello, I'm Darlene Lynch, Head of External Relations for the Georgia Office of the Center for Victims of Torture, or CVT, in the United States. Je peux me présenter, je m'appelle Daniel Mtambana Mazinde. Je suis directeur du Centre Pédi Congo. At CVT, we view paragraph 14 of the Global Rehabilitation Standards as an expression of the right to rehabilitation, which is described in Article 14 of the Convention Against Torture. It reads, each state party shall ensure in its legal system that the victim of an act of torture obtains redress and has an enforceable right to fair and adequate compensation, including the means for as full rehabilitation as possible. Advocating for funding from our governments helps make it possible for survivors to obtain as full rehabilitation as possible. What is also important in these principles is uh, the, to advocate as centers uh, for the financial resources and the financial support to our victims. It's a, responsa it's a state responsibility, I know to provide the rehabilitation services to victims of torture and to abide by the Article 14 of the United Nations Convention Against Torture and the General Comments Number 3. But state failed to take this responsibility. For this reason, we are not replacing state, but we don't have other choice. Here in the U.S. with a senator from Minnesota, CBT wrote federal legislation in 1993 called the Torture Victims Relief Act. With assistance from IRCT and the other torture survivor centers in the U.S., we won congressional approval for this legislation in 1998. The Torture Victims Relief Act authorizes the U.S. government to fund torture survivor programs in the United States and globally through the Office of Refugee Resettlement, the U.S. Agency for International Development, and the U.S. Department of State, which then funds the U.N. Voluntary Fund for Victims of Torture. Vous allez constater que le monde traverse une fléau dit aux pandémies de COVID-19. Nous avons aussi des difficultés d'atteindre une norme moyenne pour la prise en charge des victimes de torture et au sein de nos centres. Et c'est pour cela que nous pouvons supplier ou demander et au centre et aux bailleurs qui pourra donc soutenir les processus de prise en charge juridique, judiciaire, et prise en charge des soins médicaux, des victimes de torture, pour qu'ils puissent financer notre centre et pour que le centre puisse avoir des moyens efficaces pour la prise en charge holistique des soins des victimes. In the U.S., we have a national network of torture rehabilitation centers and programs called the National Consortium of Torture Treatment Programs, or NCTTP. The NCTTP lobbies for U.S. government funding to support torture rehabilitation. We have created the expectation that all NCTTP members participate in this process, which is known as appropriations advocacy. Each year we gather in Washington, D.C., where we meet with our individual U.S. Senators and representatives and their staff. We also meet with these same members of Congress and their staff in our own communities at other times in the year. In each of these meetings, we stress the importance of U.S. government funding for torture survivor rehabilitation, and we thank them for supporting our work financially and politically. The difficulty is very enorme, we can't mention it, but we have to do the payment of the et au niveau national et au niveau international pour que les bailleurs puissent soutenir, puissent appuyer les centres de bien continuer. CBT has also done this appropriations advocacy in Minnesota and Georgia. In Minnesota, CBT secured legislation that extends state-funded healthcare services to our clients simply by virtue of them being enrolled in our program of care and without regard to immigration status. 
Our clients therefore receive free health care and CBT receives funding from the state to provide health, mental health, and case management services to our clients. In Georgia, we have spent several years advocating for state funding to support torture rehabilitation. And not long ago, we signed our first contract with the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. It's a small contract, but it's a start. With the state funding some of CBT's health, mental health, and case management services to our clients. We said all this and we asked that the support does not cease. Because there are centers that don't have moyens very effective. So we demand de nous soutenir, de nous soutenir surtout pour que nous puissions réaliser une énorme activité pour la prise de charge des victimes de torture aussi dans notre centre fait du Congo. To continue to sustain this program, there is a need to have a sub financial support as centers in different regions and especially in regions where torture is more practices. And for this reason, I call all international community or uh, really uh, UN agencies who are supporting victims of torture to support center and especially the who are working under the umbrella of IRCT. Nous disons et nous vous remercions.